our kids that they will be learning how to use cross-site scripting and a super special tool out of Call Linux that can help us take cross-site scripting to the next level. And that includes remotely controlling the entire browser, doing even fake pop-ups to capture the user's email as well as password. This sounds crazy. And now wait a second, before we start hacking, YouTube may take this video down, so you wanna watch to the end. Get the video, download the video, put it somewhere into your hard drive, save it, and watch it. So 10 years later, 20 years later, you can still see Mr. Handsome Loy. And of course, as usual, before we start debugging, I mean hacking, you always wanna make sure that you wear your thinking cap. And of course, ask your mom for permission first, before you start hacking, or oh, maybe. Ask Mr. Daddy Loy. Nowadays, in a lot of messaging apps, what they allow you to do is to load up a web version of it. And if you see right here, what we have is Mr. Hacker Loy, and he'll be accessing over into this web version, and he'll be injecting something of his own JavaScript. So in this case, you would have something like script, and then after which there'll be like a alert just to test and see if we're able to get a vulnerability discovered on this specific web application. And if that works, We'll load up Call Linux, which has a specific tool here called Browser Exploitation Framework that is super powerful in terms of injecting remote control over into the browser, including a lot of this different type of phishing techniques. So right here, we are on Kali Linux, and I've written a chat application service. So this could be your WhatsApp web, your Discord servers, your messengers, and I have it running right here. I can hit enter on this, and we have now started the application. So if you see right now, we have the IP address of 192.168.0.105 and port 5000. So this is where the web application server is hosted on. And if I hit over into the browser, I hit enter on this, and you can see right here, we have the lab server running and I have a specific profile photo too. I can go in and say, hello. So whoever joins into this channel will be able to chat with Mr. Hackle Loy. Now on the other side, I have script Kitty Loy running. So you can see right here, we are using a different profile photo too. So I can say, I dare you to hack me. I send this and you can see right here, script Kitty Loy is now challenging Mr. Hackle Loy to hack him. And my question to you is, are you up to the challenge? Now remember the super cool tool I was telling you and sharing with you earlier? And all we have to do right now is enter the following super user do, enter bif-xss. So this is installed by default on Kali Linux and we can run this very quickly. I hit enter on this, enter a super user password, in this case, 1234578. I hope you're using the same password as I am. And you can see right here, we have it up and running. We have the hook and we have the example. So all I have to do right now as you open up the user interface for us and we are locked right in. So once I'm locked right in, anyone who opens into or load the hook.javascript will be able to control that session. All right, so you can see what's gonna happen here. So if I hit back over a terminal, all right, we have the following of script source equal, in this case is 127.0.0.1. However, if you recall earlier, our IP address is 192.168.0.105. So this is the Kali Linux IP address. And all we have to do is change this up a little bit. So all I have to do is do a right click on this, or right, copy the entire script, copy selection, all right, paste it over into the chat right here. I paste it and we have to change the IP address from 127 to 192.168.0.105. And I can enter something. I enter the following of say challenge, Accept it. Good luck, buddy. And then all I gotta do is click send. Boom. I hit back over into the target browser and I can see the following right here. All right. You don't see any difference because the JavaScript is loaded inside the site. And if we go back into Kali Linux, we go over to the browser exploitation framework into the control panel here. All right, we'll see a pop-up. The pop-up states the following. This is a Windows computer from 192.168.0.214. I clicked on that. And we can see, for example, the details of the browser, who is coming to this specific JavaScript. And the most powerful part of all is commands. This is the part where we can capture the credentials. So let me show you. One of that is called Social Engineering Module. And there's a lot of modules available here that you can easily use to run any form of control into the target session. So I select onto Pretty Taff, and we have following here called a Facebook pop-up. 
ask the user for the username and password. I click execute. You can see right here, command four. I hit back over to the target browser and you see here, Facebook session timeout. I enter say the following of script kittyloy at gmail.com and a password of I love Hacker Loy. I click login, boom, done. I hit back over into browser exploitation framework and you can see the following information here. We have the command results. Answer is script kittyloy at gmail.com. I love Hacker Loy. Now the other really powerful one is to redirect the entire page into like a fake login page. So if you see right here, we have the following called Google Phishing. And all I have to do is, if you watch carefully, it's gonna happen in a flash. So all I gotta do now is I'm gonna switch this really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and click execute. I switch it back right now. And if you look at what's going on, we get redirected to a fake Google Phishing page. And if I enter, of course, again, script kittyloy at gmail.com and I of course enter the password of I love hacker loy. I click sign in, whatever. And then of course, we were redirecting to a completely unreachable page. I head back over into browser exploitation framework. I look at the module results history, username, password, I love hacker loy. If you really want to know what's going on, you can go to the top right corner of your browser and select under more tools, click onto web developer tools, select onto network and you can see right here, the IP address of 192.168.0.105 port 3000 is constantly running. Now, if I reset the server, all right, go ahead and queue the server, I clear on this, and if I go ahead and run it right now, okay, this is a restart of the application server without the injected script, and I hit back over the site, I hit enter on this, now we load the application and you can see right here. Okay, let me go in and clear all of that because it was loading from the previous session. I hit enter on this again. So you can see right here, the following network history does not show the hook.js is running. However, the moment I enter the script, all right, source equal HTTP 192.168.0.105 part 3000 followed by hook.js. And then I close off the script. Now I click and enter say hello. This is a task script and I click send. You can see right now, right at the bottom, the hook.js is constantly running and this gives us the session because this JavaScript does not belong to this application server. It belongs to the browser exploitation framework that is most likely going to be hosted on a completely different server because there's a discovery of a vulnerability of the site that is now targeted by the hacker that's now injected their own JavaScript.